Hello friends. Have you ever wondered how electricity is generated? Why electrical networks usually transport alternating voltage and not so much of direct voltage? And why the alternating voltage has a sine wave shape and not a square or triangle? If you are curious about these topics, this video will help you. My name is Johanna and I hope this video is of interest to you, in that case don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. To answer these questions we have to talk, on the one hand about a physical phenomenon called induction, and on the other hand we have to talk about the construction technology of electric generators. Electricity is the science that studies the physical phenomena related to the presence and flow of electrical charges. Basically, an electric charge is a physical property associated with particles like the electron and the proton. The first one with an electric charge, let's say negative, and the second one with a positive electric charge. Normally in metallic conductors we can consider that protons are immobile forming the metal structure, while some electrons, not all, can move more or less freely inside the metal structure. Electric charges create what we call electric fields through which charges interact with each other, exerting attractive or repulsive forces depending on the sign of the charges. Charges of the opposite sign attract each other, while charges of the same sign repel. But not only can other charges exert forces on an electric charge, magnetic fields such as those generated by magnets can also exert forces on electric charges. These electromagnetic forces that act on electrical charges such as electrons, can cause them to move within a conductor in a certain direction, causing a net negative electrical charge to appear at one end of the conductor, while a positive net charge appears at the other end, which will lead to a difference in potential or electrical voltage that may lead to a current if the circuit is closed. This physical phenomenon is described by the so-called Faraday's law of induction, which is the basis of the technology of rotating electrical machines such as generators and motors. This physical law is described by a very simple formula, which tells us that when we have an electrical circuit such as a loop and a magnetic field such as that generated by a magnet, an electromotive force can be induced on the loop, that is, an induced voltage, which is directly proportional to the speed of change of the magnetic flow passing through the surface that delimits the circuit. If the magnet and the loop are immobile, the magnetic flux generated by the magnet passing through the loop will be constant and will not vary, so no voltage is generated in the loop. However, if the magnet moves, the magnetic field lines that traverse the surface of the loop will change and a voltage will be induced in the loop. In reality, the important aspect is not that the magnet moves, but that there is a variation of the magnetic flux in the loop. This variation can be caused by the movement of the magnet, the movement of the loop, but it can also be caused if we change the size of the loop or if we change the intensity of the magnet. In all these cases the magnetic flux will change and we will generate a voltage in the loop. This phenomenon can be amplified if we increase the number of turns in the electrical circuit creating in that way a coil, of course using an insulated conductor. The voltage induced in the coil will be proportional to the number of turns. In this way we can build generators with a different output voltage simply by varying the number of turns. Now we know that we can generate an electrical voltage in a circuit using the physics of electromagnetic induction. It is time to see the technological aspects associated to the construction of electric generators. As we see, we can build a basic electric generator, simply by moving a magnet through a coil. We can see this technique of generating electricity in some flashlights that work simply by shaking a magnet through the inside of a coil. In this case the voltage generated will not be constant and will depend a lot on how we shake the magnet inside the flashlight, but since the movement is alternating, that is, the magnet will move for example from right to left and vice versa, the polarity of the generated voltage will also alternate. In this way we have built our first alternating voltage generator, although it will not be a sinusoidal voltage of a constant frequency. This reciprocating movement is not as efficient if we compare it with a rotational movement, for this reason electric generators look for the variation of the magnetic flux through a relative rotary movement between the magnetic system and the induced circuit. Following the example of the previous flashlight, we can find other flashlights on the market where, thanks to a crank or lever, we can rotate the electricity generation mechanism. 
Once we have introduced rotary motion as an efficient solution to build an electric generator, it is time to explain why voltage has a sine wave shape. Let us suppose a basic design of an electric generator formed by a magnet and a loop rotating between the two poles of the magnet. As we have seen, the induced voltage is proportional to the speed of change of the magnetic flux through the loop. When the loop is in a vertical position, the magnetic flux will be maximum, while when the loop is in a horizontal position, the magnetic flux will be zero, since no magnetic field lines pass through the loop. If we take into account the angle of inclination or rotation of the loop, the flow through it is given by this expression. Phi sub m is the maximum flux when the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic flux, and alpha is the angle that the perpendicular to the loop makes with the direction of the magnetic field. When the loop is in a vertical position, the alpha angle takes the value 0 degrees and then its cosine is equal to 1 and therefore the flow is maximum. When the loop is in a horizontal position, the alpha angle takes the value of 90 degrees and then the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0, so the flow is 0. In this way we see that the formula complies with the conditions for the vertical and horizontal positions of the loop. If we now apply Faraday's law and apply the derivative of the cosine function, we will have the following expression, where we see that the final formula includes the sine function to describe the evolution in time of the voltage. Therefore, the sinusoidal waveform is nothing more than the result of using a rotating induction system. Although the sine wave shape is the most common in electrical systems, it is possible to find small-size uninterruptible power supplies, for example to protect a home computer, which generate a non-sinusoidal voltage at their output. This waveform is called pseudo-square, which although not the most suitable for the PC power supply, makes the uninterruptible power supply simple and relatively inexpensive. Other systems such as variable speed drives, responsible for feeding and controlling electric motors, also generate voltages that are not sinusoidal, but rather a complex high-frequency wave generated with a technique called pulse width modulation, or PWM. But let's go back to our simple magnet and loop-based AC voltage generator. This configuration is very good at a theoretical level since it illustrates the concept of electromagnetic induction. However, at an industrial level, to obtain high voltages and powers, the loop is replaced by an armature based on many turns and the magnet is replaced by coils that act as electromagnets generating multiple magnetic poles distributed in the circular structure of the generator. These electromagnets are fed from the own energy obtained from the generator, it is what is known as self-excitation. In this way, we can build high-power generators. For example, we can find windmills with 6 megawatt generators and 1000 megawatt generators in large nuclear power plants. Although now it may seem strange to us, electric generators were not used initially to generate alternating voltage but direct voltage. This is because the first electrical distribution systems implemented in large cities for public lighting were based on direct voltage generation and distribution systems. If a commutator formed by a system of collectors is added, the voltage generated by the loop is reversed every half cycle, which means that the voltage always has the same polarity, although as we see it is not constant. These first DC voltage generators were called dynamos. There are several very interesting films that describe the historical battle that occurred between Thomas Alva Edison as a defender of DC electrical distribution systems, versus Nikola Tesla who defended alternating voltage systems. Reality shows us that AC distribution systems won this battle, among other reasons for the ease and efficiency of transporting AC electric energy over long distances, thanks to the use of power transformers. Losses in electrical distribution lines are proportional to the square of the current, so reducing the current by raising the voltage in the substation transformers means reducing these losses, thanks to which power plants can be hundreds of kilometers away from cities or consumers. In Edison's time, raising the DC voltage was a complicated task, so the power plants had to be located inside or very near to the cities as the length of the electrical system was limited by losses in the cables. For these reasons, the idea of Nikola Tesla was finally adopted as the most appropriate solution. However, today thanks to power electronics, it has been possible to build DC high-voltage distribution lines. To end this video, 
I would like to comment that there are other physical phenomena in addition to electromagnetic induction that allow us to generate electricity. For example, we can generate electricity from chemical reactions, a phenomenon used for the construction of batteries, which not only allows us to generate electricity but also store it for use when necessary. It is also possible to generate electricity using the photoelectric effect. For this purpose, we can use photovoltaic panel made from semiconductor materials, which release electrons when photons from sunlight hit them. Another very interesting technology is hydrogen fuel cells, which use a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to generate electricity directly. And so we have reached the end of this video where I have presented you the basis of AC voltage generation through the induction process and why the AC voltage has a sine wave shape. We have also seen why electrical distribution systems are based on AC voltage and not on DC voltage, and finally we have seen other ways of generating electricity other than the phenomenon of induction. I hope you have found it interesting. If that is the case, don't forget to drop a like, so that I know that you liked it. In future videos we will deal with more technical aspects related to electricity and electronics. Therefore, if you don't want to miss them, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. See you in a next video. Bye.